hello and welcome back to the second part of our lesson. Now, uh, in the previous lesson, we ended by saying that at times there could be a conflict in the objectives or different stakeholders. We say, uh, for example, workers want higher salaries because of maybe trade union pressure. Remember, we say trade unions are pressure. So they are fire pressure company, they want higher salaries, right? Which is understandable. On the other hand, consumers or customers want cheaper products. So if the cost of production is high, right? So spending a lot of money to pay salaries and wages, spending a lot of money for electricity and water, spending a lot of money for repairs, the other things that constitute production. Now it means the cost of the products will be high. So if customers want products that are cheaper, then they will become a conflict. Therefore, managers have to compromise to decide which objectives are best for the company. So, given these two sets of conflicting objectives, it's upon the managers now to decide why. Are we going to increase the salaries of the workers or are we going to lower the prices so that we attract more demand uh, for products? Then they are going to take the best alternative. Now, next, we are going to look at people in business and uh, specifically we are going to see how to motivate the workers. Now, it is very important for business to have a well motivated workforce. And the main reason why people work, one, is for money. Money will enable them to pay for the basic needs for life and some want. Now basic necessities are like shelter, clothing, and food. So when they get the money, they're going to meet those. And the other ones like television, furniture, and so forth. People also want for security, right? To know that you are safe. And here we are not referring to the physical safety, but we are talking about financial safety or financial security. People also want for affiliation. These are what we call social needs. So they want to feel part of a group. Meet people and make friends. So when you are working, you're not going to be alone. So you want to feel like you belong to a group. People also work because of self important what we call esteem. You want to feel that you are important and that the job you do is important. Right? That's why people work. They want to feel important. How? They will be appreciated for a job well. People also want for job satisfaction to feel pleasure that we have done a good job. Now, uh, boys and girls, is that there is nothing as good that is refreshing as being told, yes, you did, a, you did a good job. That satisfaction that comes with that is very important and motivates to want to work. And finally, people want for motivation. Right? The feeling that makes employees want to work hard effectively and that is you are motivated. You want to live, you want to offer your best. That is motivation. Now, what are some of the key motivational areas? What motivates? What drives people to work? Now, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, uh, which is a pyramid showing the different types of needs and how some are more important than others. This is the first motivation of you. So Maslow uh, is one of the guys, one of the people who came up with a theory to try and explain what motivates people. So according to him, he came up with pyramid. Right? I'll 
show you the diagram that shows different types of needs and how some are more important than others and have to be satisfied before one moves to a higher type of need. Now, on the screen there, you see a pyramid uh, from bottom where we have the widest. Remember, a pyramid, the base is wide, then it becomes narrower and smaller, it goes up, it's a triangle. Pyramid. Now, at the bottom, we have physiological needs. So, as you can see, it is the widest, meaning physiological needs are the most basic. There are many, and they must be satisfied first. Right? I'll give you examples. Next, we have the safety or security needs. Again, there are many. Then we have the social needs. We have the steam needs. Then we have self-actualization. So, as you can see from the pyramid, when we talk about the physiological needs, what are some of the examples of physiological needs? Here, we have food. Right? We have rest, we have shelter, how is it fulfilled? We receive it with it. And when we talk about food, we are referring to basic food. Remember, basic needs, what now we are referring to are the physiological needs, these are, the, are those necessities for life. If you don't have them, what happens? You are going to die. Right? If we don't eat, if we don't have shelter, if we don't have nothing, we are going to die. Now, when we talk about food, pizza, for instance, is not a basic meal. Okay? That is a luxury, right? You can do without it. You can buy um, chapati and beans. That is basic. Alright? The next we have the self or security needs. And these are, these they offer protection against danger and poverty. Having fair treatment which is fulfilled by having job security. So if someone has a job that they are secured of, they know it will last some time, then they are having what we call physiological needs. Remember like now we have the COVID-19 and so most people, their job security is no longer there. People have been laid off work, people have taken pay cuts, others have been signed on compulsory uh, and paid leave. So they don't have that job security. They don't feel safe anymore. Once you are not able to provide for your family, then you don't feel secure financially. And that brings us end of lesson. In our next lesson, we are going to look at uh, the affiliation needs, the self-esteem and actualization needs before we move to the FW Taylor theory.